Everybody, it's time for the Myth Wits. Uh, we are, t- tonight is going to be interesting because Mike is running this show. So if you saw him doing this, that was a hand signal to let me know to go because there's, otherwise there's no way to let me know when to go. Pete, As you can- how do you <laughs> stop this crazy thing? <laughs> I'm I'm in a hotel room, beautiful hotel room here in <laughs> here in wild and wonderful St. Robert, Missouri. Missouri. Uh, but I am very cl- Mike, Mike, very close to. Uranus. Because uh, it uh, doesn't feel like it. It feels like you're very far away from my anus, and it's very <laughs> uncomfortable not having right. you here. <laughs> so, anyway, so, uh, yeah, everybody, this is the show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity, as you can already tell, and coated with sarcasm. Every week we bring on an industry guest to talk about the ever-expanding Geekiverse and to play a game with us. We're not going to play a game this week. Just be, uh, We'll tell you why. Uh, we do our dances to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I am your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me this week is my co-host and guy running the board right this minute, Mike Kafis. Hi. <laughs> In the spotlight. Our guest this week is our buddy, returning guest, and as far as I'm concerned, with James Scarpio. Hey, everybody. Good to be back on again. Hi, so, James. Uh, so, Hi, Mike. Yeah, so I, I had to travel for work, so I uh, it was either not do a show this week or leave it in the capable hands of Mike. <laughs> you, you, um, you keep using that word capable. Right. <laughs> I do not think it <laughs> means a, what you think it means. <laughs> there, is, there is a lot to make this show work. I mean, it's a lot. And when I try and tell people this, you know, I, I don't think people, even Mike, even today, Mike, you know, I don't think they get, like, the complexity uh, of 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 what it takes to make this thing look the way it does and work the way it does, uh, it's a lot of work. So Mike Mike did the best he could getting this stuff ready, but he got he got hit with a uh, with a Microsoft update that really torpedoed right you torpedoed you pretty mm-hmm. much. It took hours away of his getting ready ability, but I think we're good. Um, you know I can, I can't I'm on a I'm on a notebook in a hotel room. I don't have my three monitors, so it's hard for me to check. Uh, I'm looking at my phone right now. I'm going to see if I can check because I don't want to run anything else on my computer at the minute because I'm on a, I'm on a hotel Wi-Fi. But I think everything's going smooth. Yeah. It if we could just like – uh, someone other than, like, I don't know, Jay Libby, tell us if we're actually being heard or not. That would be helpful. <laughs> oh, well, Paul can hear us because he left me a message that says, uh, both feet in Uranus. So he must, he must oh, be able well, to hear what I'm saying. Either that or he's <laughs> – Hell of a, uh, you know, hell of a, what is that called? Well, He's psychic. psychic, yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. So anyway, look. So we got we got a good show tonight. Um, we were talking, and this is this show is kind of James's idea. So uh, hence he's he's the guest. So Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven is coming out, right? Uh, and James, do we we don't still don't have a date on that, do we? Um, for the video game, I could have swore it was at the end of this year, but I'm not particularly following the video game as much as I'm trying to get information or see what I can on what's going to be called Cyberpunk Red, which is going to be the next RPG version. Oh, they, oh, so it's not going to be Cyberpunk 2077. The RPG is going to be Red. Yeah, that's at least from what I've read and from what I've heard from different sources is that the next uh, game will be called Cyberpunk Red. All right, all right, cool. Now, the three of us are g- ginormous Cyberpunk fans, mm-hmm. right? I mean, I know, Mike, that's your favorite role player it is. of all time. It is. Yeah. And and I'm super huge fan of Cyberpunk, at least Cyberpunk 2020. Yeah, uh, buddy. Let, 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 me, let me clarify that. <laughs> I need to be very clear about, about that. <laughs> And uh, James is very excited about the new Cyberpunk that's coming out. I have some trepidation, but but I have I have some faith that it will be everything will be good. Um, well, because there's that know. version of Cyberpunk we don't talk about, right? The, yeah. That that version which shall not be named. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, I think that was called Barbie Edition. Yeah, Barbie Edition. Uh, Cyberpunk Barbie. 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 Yeah, Barbie. Barbie. Cyberpunk Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know what? Great. We we worked on that version. Yeah, I know. Kind of... I don't I don't have a bag of shame to throw on my head, so I'll uh, just kind of do this. But but no, go ahead. 
<laughs> well, I was gonna say, you know, I mean, we're picking on we're picking on Mike right now, Mike Pondsmith. Uh, we love Mike, so oh, yeah. I, I I don't want anyone to think that you know that we're we're trying to be mean. You know, Mike ran into some trouble with that. Like, so the artwork, just in general, like apparently, from my understanding, his artist, he had artists lined up, he had paid for artists, and they kind of screwed him over. So he had to make shit happen. So he got Barbie dolls. I don't know. He got, he got action figures and took pictures so of them. I will say this about Cyberpunk 3 and about Mike, because I love Mike too. And Mike Pondsmith realistically has been a designer before his time. Um, right. And not just trying to excuse the art direction he went with 3.0 or 3X, I think it was called, or whatever the hell it was called. Um, things like... Uh, Games like Castle Falkenstein, written at least 30 years before um, steampunk was a thing. Yeah. Right? So, if anything, Mike is sort of a visionary. I mean, I will still raise my fist and go, damn it, Mike, we're two years away from 2020. Where the hell's my flying car? But, right. you know, on the other hand, a lot of stuff that... Um, he brought up was very intuitive. Uh, so I don't want to deviate because I'd actually like to start at the beginning, at least from a fanboy perspective. And yeah, then... let's do that. All right, yeah. You know what? We, we, we jumped the gun on this. Let, let's start from the beginning, James. Go ahead. All right. So, but one point I wanted to make is that, um, so in Cyberpunk 2020, the common uh, money that was used is the euro. And this is many years before the euro basically just swept mm -hmm. uh, Western Europe. So again, just really intuitive, very before his time. But let's go back, I believe, and I, Mike, if uh, you're a fan, you probably have these three books. Uh, Cyberpunk, the, uh, this is the thir um, 2013 edition. Cyberpunk, the role-playing game of the dark future. It was a three-box set. Friday Night Firefight, which was the combat set. And last, um, it's somewhere. Ah, no. There's some... Damn it. It's one of these. It's hard to work backward. <laughs> and then there was just like the style guide that talked about the corporations and uh, and everything. It was called Welcome to Night City, a source book for 2013. So this was honestly, I remember getting the box set, which I have the box set here. Hold on. Going off screen. And I still actually have my original box set from way back when. Mm. So some of the things to talk about 2013, then we can uh, open up, is that there were three saddle stitch books, um, each of them no more than about 40 pages long. Uh, the rules were really simple. I, I'll talk about mechanics in a little bit. But look at this. I mean, look at this really slick black and white artwork on here. Um, you know, going through just opening random pages and finding things like, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. It wasn't super picture heavy, but the stuff in there, like this picture is freaking amazing. Yeah, if I can get it on the camera correctly. There you right? go. Yeah, yeah. 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 This. Um, the combat system was actually very disconnected from the main core rules. It almost kind of felt like they were saying, hey, here's a combat system you can use if you want to. <laughs> it, it wasn't particularly felt tied into the book. And the setting was really cool. So <clears throat> this comes from a test. I think, like I said, 87, I think this was. Um, people can correct me if they need to. But for its time, this was the game that you could go out and play Blade Runner. This was the game mm -hmm. that you could go out and play, um, you know, uh, what do they call it? Ghosts in the Machine, uh, Robocop. So any of those genres of, of cyberpunk, or even if you're like hardcore and read the William Gibson books or any of the Bruce Sterling stuff, uh, Burning Chrome. So if you haven't yeah. read it and you're a cyberpunk fan, you're bad, go and read it. Oh, now. my God. Burning Chrome is so good. And Burning Chrome is a really great book, too, for people who don't want to be invested in time because it's all short stories. Yep. And one of the short stories was made into a horrible Keanu Reeves movie called Johnny Mnemonic, <laughs> which if you just kind of forgive the movie, the, the story is really great. And it's short, too. It's an incredibly short story. Um, so, Mike, just uh, going to you, your experiences with 2013. Uh, I was a player. I never DM'd it, but um, I just, I guess, I just always enjoyed wanting to play. And, oh, hell, I mean, come on, Pete. You, 
I, I don't, I'm so confused right now just running everything. I see three pictures of myself, so I, I don't even know what to, where to look. But uh, you good. got to talk about links. Yeah, like, Pete, you have to talk about links because like, that will help I, answer the question. All right, so, so, all right, so to be fair, Mike, Mike is a player. He's, he's never been the guy to be the DM or right. anything like that. He, okay. he's, he's been a player, and we, and we have, you know, um, John was a big DM, and, and Steve was a DM, and I did some DMing, uh, but, but it was mainly John. So when you ask Mike, he's like, hey, uh, you remember when you played 2013? Mike's going to be like, I played Cyberpunk. I don't know what gotcha. number that was. Yeah. I think I think the only game I think the only version Mike ever played was 2020 because okay. uh, when did 2020 come out? Was that like um, that was like 90? I want to say 90 because it yeah. wasn't short after um, Cyberpunk 2013. It was maybe three or four years right um, yeah. between editions. And so, but the the great thing about the 2020 edition was it wasn't it was very light so honestly most of the stuff that i ran with 2013 was stuff i made up myself which was basically this bastardization of robocop and a bunch of other things uh thrown together but that's what was really enjoyable about this um it uses interlock which is a system that they used up until the version we will not speak of and it's a really simple system you add your stat together you add your special ability together and you roll a d10 and the, in the difficulty hits there. Right. Um, Fire, Friday Night Firefight, which is the combat system, in the first edition was pretty simple. Actually, it was created because I think one of the taglines was the future is disposable. So I don't know if you can put this up there, but hmm. pretty much you have this like little combat character sheet mm -hmm. that you use to play the game. And combat went in three phases. Um, and just it was it was pretty simple. It was very much point and shoot and die. And then there was armor <laughs> that you could take points off. Right. Um, but it it was really cool, like I said, really cool for its time. I still love running it despite the what they fixed in 2020 edition. But uh, you know, I, I can gush all day about this. Just getting the box for the first time, uh, opening it up, playing games. My campaign that I ran for probably about five years which started in 2013 and went to 2020, they nicknamed Kevlar Pajamas because I was a pretty vindictive game master back then. And I would do things like they would all be in bed and suddenly hit squads would break into their apartment right. and start shooting. So <laughs> the joke was is that, oh man, we, we need to sleep in Kevlar Pajamas. So Yeah, yeah. And, and Kevlar it was funny, Pajamas. With, with Cyberpunk, you know, that was one of the games where it's just like, you know, you the, the game master would ask the player, why the hell would you wear your armor and, and all your guns into the bar? And it's like, because you're the game master. That's why. <laughs> like, like, if, like, like, if you were like a normal game master, I wouldn't have to do that. But, but uh, you made me, mom. You know, <laughs> it's like, because it's like, I get shot at when I sleep. I get shot at when I'm having a drink. <laughs> Which is pretty cyberpunk. Um, you know, it, it's, that was the fun of the game because it was just nuts like that. Yeah, but, and I'll, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, yeah, no, no, I was gonna say, but um, you know, it it, it was fun, and and as you get older, you play that game with more nuance, and mm -hmm. it becomes a better game. Actually, Spencer is calling uh, um, James. Uh, your new nickname is KPJs. Yeah, KPJs. <laughs> Kevlar pajamas. I wonder right. how like you probably wouldn't be able to sleep in true Kevlar pajamas. I think that'd be kind of painful. Oh, it might be 2020 very, versions. Very itchy. Look <laughs> <laughs> up with a rash. But um, like even going back to here, talking about combat system, if I can get that on there, yeah. there was I think five categories. There was like um, there was like F wound, which I can't remember what F. This is like a fair wound or something. But yeah, serious wound, critical wound, mortal wound, dead. That, that was it. Like, you went from, like, okay, I'm hurting to dead. There really <laughs> particularly wasn't anything. And cyberware was handled really well before we get into 2020. Um, they used just, they took a lot of references from anime. They took a lot of references from the actual, like, cyberpunk novels. Um, and it wasn't a very down-your-throat sort of thing. People had cyberware because they probably lost limbs in a war. 
And it was cool because when they talked about the Russian cyberware, which was black market, uh, these things were huge. It was kind of like putting RoboCop's arm on yeah. a human body. They were just these, these big old, like, brutal, I got a yeah. big old pinch of arm or, or, you know, or like a chainsaw yeah. on the end of my arm. Yeah, and it really fit for the time, and it kind of gave a feeling of body horror, too. Yeah. It's like, oh, my God, I'm not getting cyberware because it's fashionable. I have it because either it's a product of my work or it basically means that I got into a fight that I couldn't ex escape from, right? Right. Um, but again, simple. So this actually had two supplements. And actually, I want to show you something that I'm very proud that I managed to hold on to. So in the Bay Area, there was an independent third party um, game designer who did a very short run. I think there were only six of these, and I only have up to the first four. <clears throat> of a little thing called interface. Now, interface was in its all true form a zine. So if you popped it open, it just had stuff like for uh, new tech and talked about modifications and different ways you can play rules. Uh, there was even a Radas in there for the actual full game. Uh, Prometheus was the name of the, the third party uh, company. But interface is really cool. And if you can find these on eBay, they're a treasure within themselves, especially if you still play in the 2013 version. Um, it has, just has amazing stuff. You know, John had those. And oh, you're really? saying the, the Bay Area, yeah, but it, they made it out here to the East Coast because uh, our, our game master, John, he had all of those. I think he still does. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, those were official products, correct? They were, mm. I believe, in a sense, they were Mike didn't like say, hey, I'm going to do a Gygax on you and sue you for these. Right. Um, I think, in fact, he did those. And, and no offense, I, I love the Gygaxes. Just going back to old <laughs> TSR at the time when in the late 70s, you went, I created something for D&D. &D. And then the next day, it's like, oh, look, there's a cease and desist letter. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know you made it big. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm, so, wow, they made it across country. All right, because... I remember, I think, let's see if there's any sort of... Was it there, was there an interface, was one of the interfaces, did it have like cyber, like, a, not cyber, like a Thulu type um, uh, cybernetics and stuff in it? Because I remember I had a character I was playing, I got a uh, tentacle arm. So it was basically, oh, that's right. it, it, it was like a cyber arm, but each one of the fingers where the finger ended was the, actually, was actually the tip of a tentacle. And I could, I could like take the arm and pop it apart and it would split into five tentacles. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So a that was like way hentai before hentai, right? Or actually, when you know, I mean, no, I hentai's remember, been around for a while. But I can't remember what book that came out of. It may not have been an interface. It might have been something else. But there was there was a book that that they took that out of because there was, uh, and it was it was for cyberpunk, and it might have been I Ianis that did that. You remember Ianis mm. did a bunch of stuff. Yeah. They um. Yeah. The, it was weird mixture stuff too. Like I believe they did a. Where will uh, no, I'm sorry, a vampire crossover yeah. with yeah. Cyberpunk? Yes, they did. And another one did another weird crossover. Um, but it's actually kind of fitting that we'll talk about in a little bit about the vampire crossover because I, I will definitely not pull punches with 2020 on some of the stuff that I felt was a little, um, although a product of its time, but let's stick to 2013 for now. So 2013 actually had four supplements uh, released for it. All right, so there was Hardwire, uh, right. based oh, yeah. on the uh, the novel of the same name. Uh, there's a couple I don't have. One was Near Orbit, which was kind of a cool outer space supplement. Mm -hmm. Yep. That never got touched on again, really, in the 2020 stuff. But um, we actually used space stations in the early part of my my cyberpunk game. We which did. Which is kind of yeah. sad. Oh uh, yeah. So and then uh, let Rocker Boy, which was kind of a cool one too. Uh, so it was a, a book based on one of the classes that you can play, which actually we should probably talk about like the cool classes you could play. And then the last one is my favorite because this was definitely the yeah. Riff's book of overpowering everything. Oh, yeah. right. Solo of fortune. <laughs> right. And you know, you wanted guns, you want like, and it's funny too, because if you look at there's like the art in here is like some, some fat white dude. That like took pictures of himself with like wires glued to his head wearing mirror shades. Right. I not that there's anything talk... wrong with that. No, and I well... shouldn't have a fat white dudes, but 
<laughs> it was just it was just kind of weird. It's like, how oh, cute it's a chubby cyberpunk dude. It's uh it's adorable. That's probably really messed up and I wasn't fat shaming, so America don't crush me on the internet because you know, I don't know. I'm owning it, right? <laughs> right. So yeah, that's hey, how that works. Yeah, see, you could make any horrible comment you want as long as the end of it you add something to it like where you're you're owning it. I thought right. it was just <laughs> deniability, but no, okay. No, it's I'm fat, so therefore if I say fat shaming comment, I don't know. It's the same where other things work, but I'll shut up now. Look, it's, like, it's like when short people make fun of short people. I can do this. Yeah. I'm short. I had to live with it all my life. Or certain phrases and terminology. Hey, uh, what and... else you got there? Uh, what, what else you got there, James? <laughs> <clears throat> Spence, I can hear you. <laughs> what? This Spence? is the politically incorrect version of. Uh... Anyway, <clears throat> so what do you got? <laughs> <laughs> so Christ. let's look at some of the classes that you can play in 2013. All right. All right yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, foot and mouth, which is a big one. Uh, right. Let's see. It's a, it's a new cybernetic, James. <laughs> <laughs> rocker boy and rocker girl, which is one. Right. So that's obviously playing the like guitar playing cyberpunk hero. Um, okay. Solos, which I think if anyone ever plays cyberpunk, the first thing Thing they were ever drawn to was a solo yeah. it's basically this really badass killer who has almost no human empathy that just runs around cybered up and kills things right um it's basically maniac <laughs> you're basically yeah. just <laughs> serial killer <laughs> yeah no absolutely it is definitely the serial killer class did, um, did anybody ever play a rocker oh. person i never did I never play a rocker boy. No, because it, they had the class abilities. It was like, I don't want that class ability. Well, actually, in my, my long-running campaign, there was a character named Johnny Flash, who was played by my friend Ian, who was a rocker boy who, who like, lasted the whole four years. Huh. Uh, but basically, it was kind of a front because his group, his band, were also basically a team of killers. So okay, right, you know, yeah. they'd go play stuff, and then they'd kill. So, you know, as, as, as you do. You guys really um, killed last night, yeah, literally. <laughs> so Netrunners, the most unplayable class in every edition. So uh, out there to the, to the internet and to the wind, Mike, when you redo Cyberpunk Red, please fix Netrunners. Please, 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 please. Netrunners were a cool thing because, you know, go into the web and you get to do all this cool stuff. However, it was like you send the rest of the party out to eat pizza, dinner, right go right. to sleep, get an education, that sort of thing, while the Game Master worked alone with the Netrunner right. for hours on end trying to accomplish something that should have taken 30 seconds in real time. And James, and, yes. the Netrunner is all by himself. So if, if it was any kind of like really hard net run, they would get creamed. So oh, it was like, yeah. not only do, do you get alone time with the Game Master that takes forever, but you can't do anything like any anything really powerful because you're by yourself. So it's like imagine if you had one character who could only assault police stations or something, right? And it's like, yeah. and and it's like, <laughs> oh well, they're the only one here that can assault a police station. Uh, that's the good news. The bad news is is that you're the only one who can assault the police station. It's like, oh man. So yeah, every, I played a netrunner for a little while, and I I really I had to stop because it was just kind of like. It, like you said, it's broken, you know I mean? We would, we would do this net run, it would take forever, and I could never really do anything, like, awesome. Well, I could, like, Pete, break into a coffee shop. Pete, do you remember, <laughs> like, how, like, John, for a while, he kind of fixed net running. Do you remember how he did it? Yeah, he took it. It was from one of the supplements that came along later, and I think it was called from When Gravity Fails. And, he, and that was supposed to be sort of its own sort of setting, I think. I don't think that was supposed to, like – directly intermingle and he just took things from it and basically what it was was it, it overlapped net running in the real world mm -hmm. so it, it, it overlaid the net with the real world so the net runner would travel with you and wherever he was in a room is where he was in the web or yeah, something like that yeah. it was it was interesting that worked though yeah yeah no and see something like that is nice i mean most people house ruled it anyway and not to promote another game but if you really want to see net running done right 
check out um, Deccan in Cyberpunk. Uh, and sorry, in Shadowrun Five. Okay. And they, they like got it. So okay. steal those rules. Right. Uh, so anyway, next we have techies. So basically, mechanics and doctors. Right. You have med techies who are the ones that try to s slap patch you back together when you get shot, and techies who try to do the MacGyver thing on a cyberpunk level. Right. Now, now, medias. Medias are the class that I never see played because no. what, what? how exciting is that? I am a news guy. Yeah. All My right, superpower but... is fake news. No. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> well, actually, they have credibility, which allows them yeah. to use fake news to their advantage. Yes. Okay, I'm, uh, let's, let's not go down that rabbit hole. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we go to cops. Which is kind of fun because every time I've personally played a cop in Cyberpunk, I took the um, Max Rocketansby approach of having like the Mad Max sort of cop, you know, out there, cool car, right. things like that. Um, corporates was another class that I don't think anyone ever played. Oh, Steve did. Steve played a corporate. Oh, really? Yeah, Steve played a corporate really, really well. But this is how he did it. He basically played a corporate uh, it was Mr. Clean. He looked like he looked like Mr. Clean, uh -huh. um, and he was uh, a, like a I think it was a full Borg or something like that. Like he was, he was like super cy cybered out, right? Uh -huh. So if he got in a fight, he could still handle himself against the solo because he was just he, well. See, the thing was, he was a corp, right? So he had access to all this money. So he just basically took the money and bought you know cybered himself out to death, and in that way, he was like he could fight with the best of them. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, coming on to the last two fixers, which are pretty much the guys who can uh, set you up with jobs, sell drugs, sell your shit. You need to do. Yeah, <laughs> you always had to have and a fixer. Last... And nomads were cool if you really wanted to have the Mad Max version of cyberpunk. Yeah, you play all like the Chrome Boys and things like that. Well, you now know, what? Just... Now, all right. So Zach played a fixer, and that was actually really good. He 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 played mm. him very well. What was his uh, name? What was his name? Oh God, Felix. Know. Felix, that's right. <laughs> Felix, yeah. And he he wore he, he was it was weird. He was this fixer, and he was obsessed with camouflage. And he, <laughs> he would he would get these suits. He'd get these like three piece suits that were camouf camouflage <laughs> three piece suits. He once he once did a deal. So he and he, it was cyberpunk. So he did all these like shitty deals, right? And finally, he does this a like, great deal, and he makes like like a cool million. Like he he he. He really pulled it off right, and he made like a million dollars. Right. So he had this briefcase with a million dollars in it, right? Like, like money, like actual cash. Because, you know, on the street, it's hard to spend e-bucks uh, when, when uh, you're trying to deal with the criminal element. Yeah. So he had, he, had, he had a briefcase with a million dollars in it. And he was cheap and he wouldn't, he didn't want to buy like a hotel room. So he would sleep in the park and he'd actually oh God, use, that's he, right. he used the briefcase for a million dollars as his fucking... <laughs> <laughs> he was, we, I'll tell you, there was some weird eccentric shit that would happen from our party, like yeah. the uh, like the mini gun, um, the the mini gun golf cart. Oh yeah, that. But that that's I'm gonna I'm gonna save that for when James goes into the vampire stuff. Oh okay. Right, All yeah. right. So a couple of last things about this uh, that crossed. Well, one of the things I just want to point out now is technology. So if we can see this picture here which is keyboard. It has a freaking, uh, I can't think of the, the term, but it looks like a fax machine. Yeah, it does, and, yeah. And it has one of those, like, um, those, like, those weird tape wires going into yeah. it. And, yeah. you know, it's like, it's, it's 2013. In 2013, we had cooler stuff. We <laughs> cooler tech than that already. But not in 1990-ish. Yeah, That's 87. True. Yeah, it's, dude, it, it's so hard to see the future. Yeah. It is. Um, it's so bright, you got to wear shades, right? Nice. All right. <laughs> um, mirror shades at that. So anyway, the coolest thing that came out of, well, there's a lot of cool things came out of this, but life path. All right. Yeah. So yes. honestly, I could sit there and just roll up cyberpunk characters like all night, you know, because every, so if you've ever played Traveler, um, Traveler had a really neat thing where when you create your character, you actually rolled on these career paths and then sometimes you died. Like you get to a certain point and you die. Um, yeah. Cyberpunk wasn't like that, but it really just brought in, it filled out your character for you. So you knew who your enemies were, how many ch like uh, brothers and sisters you had. If you had a romantic involvement, 
they always died for some reason in this life path, but or it didn't work out. So it was very kind of grim dark for its time. Um, but it was brilliant. It was only a couple of pages long. And at the end, you actually either got more money out of it or you lost stats or ended up in prison. It was a really, really, really neat But the, the good concept pretty much outweighed the bad. Like you could get bad stuff, but the bad stuff, it wasn't equal. It was, it was you were more likely to do well. Like he didn't, didn't screw you over, which was good. There should have been some chance because you're getting some good stuff, right? But hey, we got chat room. I got uh, Jonathan had a question. Jonathan Reinhardt oh, says I was going to ask him to define yeah. it. Define. I, 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 know, I know what a futurist is. He, he okay. he's asking whether we consider ourselves to be a futurist. Futurists are people who are good at foreseeing the future, like good at predicting future technology. Um, would you? Would either one of you two? Cause I, I know how I'll answer, but would either one of you two for, uh, be able to predict? Like, do you think? Have you in the past looked forward into the future and got it right when you once you got there? Huh. Like picturing technology or where society is going to be, like you know, edible like, underwear. I predicted that. Oh my god! No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I, it, <laughs> it's it's so hard to. It really is hard. You never know where something's going to go. I mean, it depends. Right. Like if you you can like once you get one um, piece of technology and you could see how it may iterate or how it could trans um, transform um, how we do certain things. But to really predict, like, oh, next week, battery, you know, batteries are going to um, become, like, you know, obsolete because they're going to invent this new technology that we can store. It won't be like a normal battery. You know, we could store something in, in a little box, and it's energy, and we could get it whenever we want. Something like that, boom, changes the world. You know what I mean? Like, one yeah. thing could change the world that we don't know what it, its applications are going to be. Right. Oh, well, another example, too, is that back when this was written, even 2020 was written, uh, early 90s, we're looking at a, t a society that did not have wireless technology. Right. Cyberpunk yeah, all about hardwiring. You had to plug your fucking gun into your head or your yeah. wrist, right? Yeah. Yep. There was no wireless. So another thing hopefully we'll see in, uh, in red. All right. But Let's let's move on to. Well, hold on, just oh. just I wanted to answer. Yeah, I I I do consider myself a futurist. Um, I have for I have predicted several things. You have uh, foretold. One, I have foretold. As a matter of fact, back in the early nineties, I uh, I I invented Google Glass. Now I didn't invent it in the fact that I knew how it would work. <laughs> Who knew? But like, but augmented reality. I had already. I was I, I was working on my role playing game that I that I never wound up putting out, but. I had stuff in it. I had things in it that were basically Google Glass and augmented reality, um, and and it was it was all wireless. You had like you wore a thing on your wrist, and what it would do is it would read the muscle movements in your hand because if you put your fingers here and you move your muscles, you can feel them moving, right? It would sense that. It had a gyroscope in it, which I know we use accelerometer now, but gyroscope is what I knew at the time. But it would know where your hand was, and it would know what hand movements you were making. Uh, and it had there was a projector, and you'd actually wear it up here, like on the bridge of your nose, and it would it would shoot beams into your eyes and um, so that you could see what was going on. And then you wore a device, you just put a device in your pocket, which was your, your computer. And basically what it was is we're, that's what they're doing now. Cell phone is your computer and your source. Your, your, you know, the, you got the vision piece that goes on your glasses. You got the piece that you wear on your wrist because they, they have invented that now. That's actually a thing that you can, I think you can buy them now even. Um, and you could pull up screens that would overlay the real world and you could dock them in places. So you'd, you'd pull up a screen, you'd dock it, and then you could like read readouts on things and get directions. And uh, you could even do overlays on people. Like I had this one uh, program where you could, uh, it was like an assassination program where you could look at a person and it would put an overlay of their anatomy on them and show you where the heart was so that you could just tag it. You know, you could like, it'd be real easy to aim at like the heart or the lungs or whatever it was you wanted to hit. Um, so that that was just one of the things. I've done a bunch of stuff like that. But, shoot. <laughs> Jonathan. Jonathan, Jonathan Reinhardt said that you should hang with Al Gore because he invented the internet. Oh, stop it. Stop it. But no, oh, can you God. imagine the cease and desist letter, or at least the look on the face of uh, Google, where it's like, all right, I'm suing you because in this role-playing document I writ, wrote in like 1992. Right, right. <laughs> and, you know, and, Paul, and Paul Cooley say that you stole that from Dick. I have no idea what that means, but it's okay, Paul. I think he's talking about uh, uh, what's his face, Dick. Uh, Dick Tracy? No. Um, Dick Cheney? No. <laughs> okay, he's talking about uh, uh, the time machine, or no? Um, 
That was H.G. Wells. H- oh, yeah. No, that's not Dick. I don't know, Paul. Who, who's Dick? But anyway. No, yeah. I just... <laughs> anyway. Is that the game for tonight? Who's, right. who's Dick? Who's Dick? <laughs> who's Dick no, is it? no, we are not playing. We are not playing who's right. Dick. <laughs> All right. Not tonight. <laughs> but anyway, no, right. there was a bunch of stuff like that. All right. So just quickly on to Cyberpunk 2020, and then I really want to talk about the um, – well, actually, you know what? We'll, we'll go up front and actually front load those things because I know, Pete, you had a few words. So there was two companies uh, that were not our Talsorian, our Talsorian games who wrote Cyberpunk supplements, one of which is um, Atlas Games, believe it or not, uh, wrote, uh, wrote stuff. So Atlas doing – uh, Ars Magica, Feng Shui. Um, oh, we played that, know, didn't what's... we, Pete? Yeah, we played Feng Shui. Yeah. Oh, and Paul Cooley says, yeah, it was Philip K. Dick. And Philip Paul, K. Dick. he That's probably it. did put that stuff out at the same time. It probably came up the same stuff, but I've never read any Philip K. Dick. So uh, it was, what do they call that? Uh, parallel invention. Right. So, anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So anyway, they did a bunch of things. Uh, they actually wrote, God, I, I'm looking here at the adventures, and I think we're looking at at least 10, close to 10. Uh, one of the ones I recognize right off the top is the Arasaka Brainworm, which was um, really popular. The, the Chrome Berets, yeah. which was taken as the demo pro, uh, program, and uh, something called the Osiris Chip. was. Uh, there's three that I remember, but apparently they wrote more than I even was aware of. Yeah, I played one of them that was like, uh, it was a prison. It was underwater prison. Do you remember that one? Yes. Oh, my God. Um, uh, I can't think of the name, but I can, I remember it. I just don't remember. Um, but they had a bunch of really cool, like, underwater specific, specific, yeah. specific cyberware that was really sweet. Now, Ianus Games, who you talked about earlier, and now a little fact that I, I found is that they are now known as DreamPod 9. Oh, shit. They became DreamPod 9. Yeah. Yep. They became. Oh, okay. No. That's cool. Know. Did you know? I didn't Mike, know. do you know who Dream, do you know DreamPod, DreamPod 9? 9. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. no. That, was, that was Ianus Games? What was that? I, 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 Ianus. Oh. I, uh, Huh? Uh, Dream Pod Nine. Oh, anyway, yeah. Knight's <laughs> Edge. Knight's yeah. Edge was the series that did um, Cyberpunk 2020 with werewolves and vampires. Oh, didn't we right? do Knight's Edge? Didn't we play that? We did that. That's all right. So that's where our characters had become like vampires and werewolves and stuff. Oh. We did that whole thing, James. I know it's it's probably sacrilege to you, right? <laughs> but, what, <laughs> but what John did, he took those rules, he did stuff with that, and he brought in uh, Vampire the Masquerade and Werewolf and stuff. So we, we actually crossed the streams in a humongous way. Oh, we, wow. actually, we were playing <laughs> – <laughs> we're playing cyber vampire Cy- <laughs> Cypire Which if you think about it Works out pretty cool because you've got like People who can actually go up against werewolves and vampires Who aren't you know it's people with badass Cybernetics you know you, you take a werewolf Up against a full Borg and May not work out so good for the werewolf In the end Yeah it's um, I mean it's a great genre especially vamp- yeah, Vampires and cyberpunk really work Well together um, and it was interesting that they went that route with it because Atlas's stuff more played to what people were doing in the 2020 universe, but definitely Ionis took it to another level. And it's, I'm glad to hear actually someone played it because I used to just look at it and go, oh, you know, but <laughs> obviously I'm, I have no, to be kind of a purist too. So. We, had, uh, we had so many good adventures with that yeah, shit. We did. Right, and this leads, this leads to the golf cart. So, oh, wait, 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 wait. Also, uh, this was during the Buddy Black days, right? Yeah, that's right. That's what the golf cart was for. Right. Uh, okay. And because right. I'm going to, I'm going to need you to say it. All right. So, all right. So, Lawrence, this guy Lawrence is playing, uh, he's playing a solo. And, and uh, you know, and I start, they introduced these, uh, these, these vampires and werewolves. And he's like, oh, shit, how am I supposed to compete with that? Right. And I'm playing this big ass werewolf. And I was playing a glass walker. So, he's, you know, he's, he's a city, va- a city werewolf. And so he'd use these two big Malorian arms because when he, ah. turned into, when he turned into a werewolf, he could fire the Malorian arms, right? Because he was big enough and strong enough. Yeah. So he wouldn't pull them out when he was in human form. He'd turn into a werewolf and pull out these Malorian arms and just start mowing people down. <laughs> so anyway, so Lawrence was jealous of that. Uh, or, or he was just intimidated by it. And I guess so. As a player, I could see that, you know, hey, it's cyberpunk. We go to blows against each other. So you got to be careful of the guys in your party. You know, half the time you're worried about what the guy in your party is going to do to you, right? Yeah. So – 
we go into this adventure into the rainforest and he buys a mini gun now like like the the mini gun that um that they had in predator you know the little one the the little one that the, the dutch carried around with him uh-uh. and he had the backpack full of ammo well he puts this fucking thing in a bag and he and he buys like a thousand rounds of silver bullets just for me right just for me just yeah. in case he has to fight me and he but he, he decides to put it in a golf cart and we were going through the rainforest and the dm says okay uh it takes you two weeks through the rainforest to get to this location and I'm like, Jesus Christ, two weeks. What the fuck? How did it take us this long? And he's like, well, you've got some guy who's dragging a golf cart through the rainforest that keeps getting hung up on shit. I was like, oh, my God. Right? He's like, this whole time, we, we, yeah, he's like, yeah, he's just been, you know, he's been getting caught up. Like, hold up, guys. Wait a minute. I got to get it over this. <laughs> so, oh, it was a mess. It was a mess. But, but that so, was also when you had to kill the worm. Oh yeah, that was we we so we wound up fighting this thing in the in the um in the rainforest. It was some kind of fucking uh, uh the worm creature, you know, like werewolf the the worm w yeah w u r m uh you know evil creature from yeah. beyond, and it was a big tree, like a big like nasty tree or whatever I think, or or maybe it was a real worm. I don't know, I can't remember, but but I killed it, and. Uh, and and ever since then, that, that if you ever hear us at a convention, I'm like, but I killed the worm. That's right. You know, that was, <laughs> that's worm. where that comes from. It's a meme. All right. So I'm not going to dive too far into 2020. 2020 still kept interlock. They made some interesting changes. Um, definitely added more gear. The hit system uh, was to... different. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. combat was. It was still Friday Night Firefighter, at least referred to as that. But I'm trying to see if I can find something here quickly. If I can't, I'll move on. Uh, laptop computer. Does it have the... Because it was talking about how much memory a laptop computer had. And it was it was pretty funny. Because right now, it's like what, what they had listed was in, in the megabytes. Which, <laughs> you know, yeah. which is like, wow. All right. So basically you shoved your Atari on here. And, right. and that's what we had. But so same My classes. car is more powerful. Exactly. So you still have the same roles, cyber, um, solo, all that fun stuff. But just nicer artwork, a little bit better defined. But combat added a couple other things. So one, you actually got something called a body top type modifier, a BTM. Which basically, if you were like mm-hmm. super pumped, you would have like a minus four to hits. Um, it took well, it was still pretty deadly, but you actually had blocks of four that started like light wound, critical wound, yeah, you know, same as before. But it took you a while to get there, and then you had like mortal one through six. So theoretically, you got a death save, which actually was years before D and D introduced their death save. Yeah, it was. Where you it would was, roll. Yeah. Yeah, so that that was all pretty cool. Weapons were just like banana crazy. Uh, they were just like all over the place. And cyberware got a little more defined. But dude, so, it got cool, man. Cyberware got a badass. Mm-hmm. But this is where I th- and this is where I will go into my little tirade. Is that to me the the books that a, a true cyberpunk purist would own is Chromebooks 1 and 2, and I'll get into Chromebooks in a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, listen up, you primitive screwheads, which added a lot of different rules that really made the game more deadly, actually. Yeah. And uh, on top of that, the only other game... Uh, why am I... Wait, I'm blanking on it now. Is um, Maybe that that's it. Yeah, listen up, you primitive screwheads, Chromebook 1 and 2. And maybe I might throw something out there for... Um, uh, I can never pronounce his name. It's the net running one. Yeah, uh, yeah. Raish Bort- Johnny Blackhands. A uh, Raish Bart Moss's oh, right, yeah. brainware blowout. Yeah, which, yeah, yeah. That's right. Which is cool. So, the first supplements actually were 2020. Listen up, you primitive screwheads, and Deep Space, which I believe you guys mentioned. Yes. Um, earlier, but then we started getting into like Chromebook Three, Chromebook Four. Corporation Report, Volumes 1, 2, and 3, Edge Runners, Inc., Euro Source Plus. And, I mean, I can sit here and just go on for hours talking about Solo Fortune 2 and, you know, Guide to the Net, When Gravity Falls, which is one you were talking about earlier, um, Wild Sides, things like that. And realistically, what Cyberpunk 2020 became to me is Riffs. 
because yeah. it no longer was this cool genre of that you it it suddenly became this batshit crazy escalation. Everyone had to have the like seven d ten power pistol and like you know cyber legs that played movies on them and it just got sillier and sillier to everyone was walking around as full board conversions by the time we got to um the one that was called something metal which i can't... maximum metal maximum metal so by the time we got to maximum metal freaking every cyberpunk player in the universe had a full conversion board running around in mech suits yeah and yeah. that's i think that's where it kind of died for me is that once we got to like Chromebook 2, it, it like our Talcerium became White Wolf in a sense that it was just splat book after splat book. Now, now to be fair, that was a very 90s thing. Uh, White Wolf did it, TSR did it. Oh my God, TSR just pumped out games, I think, on a monthly basis just because they could. Right. And our Tal kind of did the same thing, which to me really cheapened the game. Well, it's cool. I mean, I have a bunch of them on my shelves. If I look, I can just plot but, most of the supplements. But, but. Well, let me ask you, as a as a company, what should they have done? Like, I mean, they were they they had to make product as a company, right? I mean, would you like them to go in a different direction? No, but I wish they would have kept more to the. So I think Mike, you know, and again, love you, Mike, but Mike took it to an anime feel yeah. more than a like hardcore cyberpunk genre novel feel. It felt less like Burning Chrome and more like, you know, Battle Angel Alita or something where, you know, every, or Ghost in the Shell, where everyone is just like full conversions running around in Tokyo jumping off buildings. I mean, that's pretty much. It was like everything was a, was a one up. Yeah. And it's an escalation, you know, and that's the thing. And for Game Masters, that was horrible because people would just get their hand and you would say no. And they're like, oh, man, let me get this one from Chromebook 3. It's. You know, it'll it'll make my life so much easier. Uh, but ultimately, all it did was just really cheapen the game and not make it much fun. For me, anyway. I, and again, I'm a cyberpunk purist. Don't, you know, don't listen to me as some sort of authority. I'm a fanboy who just has an opinion. All right. I, mean, I won't. So, no, I'm just kidding. So here's, here's a question from Paul Cooley. And I think it's, uh, I have an interesting answer, but I'm going to let you guys answer first. And he was asking... Because then he said he missed the earlier conversation. But do we generally think that uh, cyberpunk is dying as a genre? Uh, I'm gonna let um, I'm gonna let James go first. All right, cyberpunk has evolved. I'm not gonna say it's completely dead because so going back to Battle Angel Alita, if, has anyone seen the previews for the movie? I have. I saw the preview tonight. Oh, man, I was just sitting there going, oh, my God, okay, the eyes look really creepy, but it was so cool looking. Um, so, again, anime has really taken cyberpunk into, evolved it into something completely different. And it's more, to me, cyberpunk became more transhuman, more kind of gonzo sci-fi these days. But in my opinion, no, cyberpunk's not dead. Um, you're still going to run around. You're still going to meet people who still get the mirror shade movement, who still love to read Gibson's books. Um, but so it's not dead, but all, uh, it's it's evolved. It is something different. Pete? Yeah, it, yeah, it's different. Absolutely. Uh, the feel of it's different. Like, so I think, I think, yeah, with, like you said, with Battle, Lito, Battle Angel Alita, you've got the Cyberpunk 2077, the game that's coming out, um, you've got, uh, and there's been increasing number of things with like cybernetics, like Logan was cyberpunk, right? Oh yeah, Cyber definitely. And, stuff. and you're just, you're getting more and more of that. And, but it's different. It's a different feel. And it, that's fine. Things should evolve. Thing, things should change. It's, it's, you know, I don't want to see the same shit every year because I get bored with it. But um, I think what it has kind of lost is that, you know, cyberpunk was like the first, one of these types of genres to use the word punk in it and because it had a punk feeling like mm -hmm. punk rock like like you know like like the dead kennedy's kind of feel to it you know um you know rebel yeah uh whereas today the cyberpunk is not is not that kind of cyberpunk anymore it's more it's more about the tech it's more about the cyber and less about the punk you know what i mean well, yeah, and also punk, I mean, while punk does bring images of punk rock, when you use punk in uh, that short of um, binding, because there's a lot, there's diesel punk, there's all kinds of stuff right, out exactly. there with punk, 
Punk doesn't really, I mean, for this, yeah, I can see where the, the punk rock image comes in, but punk really refers to oppression and, dis, and uh, dystopia. Right. Agreed. I'm using that word correctly. So oh, basically, yeah. it just means that the world has gone dark because of cybernetics. So, um, and, but again, you can attach punk to anything. You can, like, again, diesel punk. You have a World War II where now everything's run by machines and it's really oppressive. Um, I mean, steampunk, yeah. where, again, you know, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I, 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 I kind of agree with you on that, but uh, I'm also thinking that the the genre of cyberpunk is almost maybe taking a split, where you where you do have the cyber and the mechanical aspects, but I think also uh, the entire computer and the net running and that aspect is almost like it, it's sort of like uh, it's it's like uh, splitting, you know what I mean? It's like multiplying or uh, cell splitting, and it's becoming two different things. So, like, kind of like Ready Player One, and the whole maybe we're going to call it virtual punk or uh, computer punk or something to that effect. You know what I mean? Because it's almost like it's part of it, and it, we feel like you know that you know maybe cyberpunk was the grandfather of whatever this new emerging thing is. But uh, at the same time, I think you know, like Ready Player One, I think solidified almost a new genre of sort of interaction that's not in the real world and it, to me it blew me away like just the yeah. the idea and how it could come to fruition the also too you got to think of the time these these stories were written <clears throat> and i know we're getting close to time and there's something else i really want to talk about quickly but <clears throat> excuse me is that this was written when we still had a cold war going on. Yep. This was written when the biggest fear was the Japanese corporate empire was going to come and take over the U S and turn everything into automated factories. Um, so a lot of fears are written in the genre too. So, Hey, it's back. <laughs> I guess. Well, now, if you took cyberpunk from a, 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 a viewpoint of today, we would China. actually be that China would be one of our big worries. Russia would be a big yes. worry again. Yes. And w biopunk, I think, would or uh, would be another big thing because cybernetics are clunky. Now we can yes. clone, yeah. create body parts that, you know, so. Med Genetically punk. modify things. We, yeah. We you can make the, the the flesh can be maybe not as strong as the metal, but I think there know. is a gen punk, like a, a bio punk. I think that is like that falls under bio punk. It could be, yeah. Okay, but the one thing I really want to talk about quickly because I know we're <clears throat> we're coming on time right. is that there was an offshoot of Cyberpunk 2020 called Cybergen. Yeah. Oh, did you like that? Cybergen was a different take, and I think this is also where Mike kind of went a little more anime than he did cyberpunk so to quickly say um cybergen was about kids there was a there was basically this disease that hit mm -hmm. and uh beer ipa shame on you peter no that's um, what jonathan was asking oh so but anyway these these children had mutant power so realistically it was kind of like x-men cyberpunk and these mutant powers kind of made them really uh, unique and a lot of it wasn't even cybernetic at the time. It was just they had like telepathy. They had um, uh, different things. But it was an interesting take on the cyberpunk world. The mechanic system in there is pretty damn cool. If you if you think interlock makes your head hurt, the, the system from Cybergen is great. There was only about three official supplements that came out for it. There was a third party um, done by uh, actually a friend of mine, uh, Jonathan Lavalee. Uh, from Canada, who actually continued the line for a while with more supplements. And believe it or not, if anyone still has it, right on. Um, there was a cyberpunk collectible card game that completely mm. failed mm. very quickly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep, Peter something was the guy who, who made it. I know that it was some sour deals with Mike Pondsmith at the time over it because I think he just basically went, cool, I have the license. Now I'm just going to make stuff and then not pay anybody. Right. But, uh, but still, the cards are great. If you're running a cyberpunk campaign, you get a stack of those CCG cards and toss them down and you can create like an adventure within like minutes. So, um, so those are the offshoots. Uh, and that's, I mean, uh, God, I can talk about this topic for hours, but I, I, would... I think... I would just like to say that um, uh, Catherine Graham 
propose that alter carbon is definitely sort of, and I don't know if she was talking about it when we were talking about the bio um, part, or it, it is like, I guess alter carbon is where cyberpunk and the biopunk definitely cross over. Well, I, okay, so I have, a, I have a thought on that, and I think we talked about this before. It's, all right, so Alter Carbon has this cyberpunk feel. It totally feels like cyberpunk, but in reality, it's, it's sci-fi because it takes – all that stuff is, like, super future. I mean, at some point, you got to, like, say – you know, they have spaceships. They travel to other planets. Like, they beam their consciousness to other planets and stuff. That was I – don't, I don't know. How do you draw the line? Is it just, is it just how it feels because – it did. It totally felt cyberpunk. It, I totally get that vibe. So when you get when you're off the show, you're gonna crawl into your full Borg suit or your uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but you know what I mean. I do like, know what you mean. But like the sleeves and some yeah. of the more tangible bio, um, I guess uh, tech. Yeah, but at what point does cyberpunk become? You know, like what, so is Star Wars cyberpunk? I mean, Luke had a cybernetic arm. Um. No, so that's right. yeah. It's it cyberpunk. I think is really kind of not a closed genre, but definitely it has its feelings. I mean, it has its place. Cyberpunk, the RPG, was what it was because ultimately cybernetics were power and yeah. having that power, and it just made the world a more horrible place because of it. Right. Um, and again, there's a lot of political stuff. I mean, Night City. The, you never saw the sun. It constantly rained, and it was acid rain. It was always dark. The skies were filled with neon. That was, and that was, know, and that, was that was altered carbon. And you had the corpse, right? So in there, they had the 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 Methuselahs, right? And they were basically the corporations. You know, the, the ultra rich that can get away and do anything and make everything happen. And here was this one guy rebelling against, you know, the, the corporations. So in feel, it was totally cyberpunk. Yeah. Oh, and, hey, Pete. Like, yeah. you know, in uh, steampunk, you could have a steam-operated uh, mechanical arm. So is that cyberpunk? That's, that's lame, actually. It's lame, but, uh, shut up. Um, so, <laughs> but another another game, and again, I'll shut up because, like I said, I can go on about forever about this. But um, another game that has a cyberpunk feel but wasn't cyberpunk is a system by Mayfair, a game by Mayfair Games called Underground. Okay. If you can still find a copy of it. So in this world, I think you could almost refer to it as super punk because what ended up happening is the government created superheroes to fight a war in Central America. And when the war was over, they're like, eh, we don't need superheroes anymore. And they all came back and they're now criminals and they're starving in the streets and they're being experimented on by like the governments and the corporations. But it's a really cool thing. And my favorite thing from it is a restaurant called Tasty Ghoul. Because apparently in this in this world, cannibalism became legal because people were starving. And right. you can actually go to a restaurant and eat human flesh cooked and fried like KFC. So Jesus. So that would bring a new meaning. I had Mexican tonight. It would be totally different there in the Tasty Ghoul, right? Be yeah, oh definitely. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So one of the things that we didn't talk about, and and I and and I know we are basically out of time, but I just want to mention it. Um, you know, I know we said we got Cyberpunk Red coming out, which we don't know anything about. Mike, you didn't get any word on that, did you? Uh, Red. Well, no. First of all, there was Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven, the 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 video game, video, the video game. game, and right, yeah. um, unfortunately, no, I didn't hear back. Okay. So, but there was there was one other book between cyberpunk 2020 and, and i know we say that, that which shall not be named um but that one I, honestly that one flopped terribly terribly like it got zero traction like not even just because of the art i mean i think the what, what system do they go back to James? so i don't want so i'm trying to do this in the most positive light because i you know i have some choice words about three okay but <clears throat> so it was done with fusion which is the most dead, bury it, burn it, and shoot it into space system that exists. And I know right now, if anyone <laughs> on the Fusion forum is listening, A, they must be on an old Yahoo account or whatever, because... <laughs> there is an um, old Yahoo account. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but it was, it was Fusion, and it wasn't even, like, updated particularly. If you look at Cyberpunk 3, you will see parts that were copy and pasted, from interlocked in with like a couple of words changed here and there. 
it it was almost kind of like he had been working on it for years and then stopped and then someone said hey you need to release this and and put everything into the book um it had some new concepts um i think alts alt gangs or alt something or other yeah, 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 yeah. was kind of cool okay. um you know they took a different approach to a lot of things but ultimately it was something that was still in the crock pot and needed about you know five more hours to cook what we got yeah. is kind of like raw meat potatoes in a broth that's kind of bubbly right? yeah, yeah it's baked <laughs> all right all right hey james you're right we could talk about this all night long but we gotta yeah. we gotta wrap up um so uh final very final quick thought oh me <laughs> anybody anybody I'll, I'll, I'll go first i'll go first, yeah, you go first. Uh, no I'm, I'm happy to see cyberpunk continue in any way mm -hmm. shape or form i love cyberpunk it's a great setting it's fantastic uh as a matter of fact we're playing a campaign right now where uh we're playing modern day but we're on the cusp of cyberpunk we're playing a campaign where we're ushering in we're on the like before 2013 it's like uh, if you were to play the 2013 version of cyberpunk we're like 2010 you know okay how, what is it uh avs just got announced they just came in trauma team is only like six months old at this point we own oh, wow. our characters got one of the first accounts so it's 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 a really cool adventure so it, it's it's cool it can still be played it's still it's still totally viable um so if i have any final words i believe you can but still buy pdfs of cyberpunk 2020 and the supplements either through our towel or i think even on drive through rpg so don't quote me on that but it's still available in pdf form um or or search ebay search amazon it's really a good game. Sure, some of the concepts are dated, but honestly, you're going to have a great time playing 2020. Um, and definitely, it'll wet your whistle for uh, Cyberpunk Red. Because I'm so excited. Like, I haven't been excited about a game since, like, Feng Shui 2 was announced a few years back. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to buy this. I'm going to embrace it. And probably run the hell out of it when I get it. So, oh yeah, my God, I, Paul no, Newt said somebody just threw their walker across the room in rage at your disrespected fusion. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I um and and you know I know you said fusion. I, I get it. And I understand why people hate it. I like the fusion system. Yes, I'm yeah, gonna I be like this. That's I how we like met, it, actually, over but, fusion. You know, it, it is. It is. Uh, I'm sorry to see, it, you know, I'm sorry that it died the way it did, but I mean, it is dead. It is throw the dirt on it, put the flowers up. It's gone. It's, it's, yeah. it, it's dead, Johnny. <laughs> but I did like, I actually did a whole bunch of stuff for it. And, you know, I, I hated to see it go, but eh, whatever. Mike, cyberpunk. Uh, I am just What's excited your for Last the, thought. I, I mean, to me, a game that I love to play and role play I'm so super excited, after, you know, obviously, just like everyone else, after seeing all of the the old trailer for the past three, four years and, like, just, you know, geeshing out on that and seeing the newer trailers and the newer news that's coming out, and CD Projekt Red that is, you know, currently working on the game um, for the video game. To me, the idea that I will be able to play Cyberpunk in a first-person shooter, yeah. like, just yeah. basically gets me pretty hard. Just saying. <laughs> All right. And okay. Let's do it. Mike. <laughs> yeah. Put me on the closer. Hey, I'm going to put you on the closer. Uh, I, I, you know what? I. I, I wanted everyone to see your big face in the big hotel room and all. I, I'm not even going to run the little thing with all the fancy okay. video behind I, I, you. You know what? I understand. That. Yeah. Yeah. Screw I, that. I get yeah. it. I get it, Mike. It's fine. It's Shh. fine. <laughs> well, <laughs> I got you. All right, everybody. You have just enjoyed. Jesus Christ. I got you, Mike. Uh, phone it in, baby. Phone right, it in. Just, just enjoyed another awesome episode of the Mythwits. We're live on Facebook Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Please ask our guests questions or just banter with the other Mythwits in the room if you missed our live show. You can always catch the Encore episode on Facebook or on YouTube. And we had a lot of people in there. Uh, thank you all for showing up. Yes. Uh, this discussion of things has been freaking rolling on my screen here. Um, yeah. Jay Libby came in late. Uh, but I want to give him props. He did a lot. He's he's he, he carried the Fusion Torch forever, and he's been the biggest cyberpunk supporter that I know of. Big Mike fanboy. He's he's got the pom poms. Mike Mike. He's our man. Um, and and he's done a lot of good stuff. Go check out Jay Libby stuff at Dilly Green Bean Games. He's got a lot of a lot of cyberpunk stuff that he did. Uh, he did what is that? Uh, uh, Chronicle Zero, 
was a cyberpunk book. So anyway, uh, find us on Facebook and Twitter as MythWits and check out MythWits.com. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher or you can listen at MythWits. Oh, no, you can't listen there. This is an old one. Uh, you, you can listen to it on your favorite podcatcher. Do the like, follow, subscribe thing, wherever it's appropriate, and make sure to share your favorite episode on social media to help spread MythWits love over the entire planet. MythWits is part of the TSR Podcast Network, right, James? Damn check straight. Out, check out TSRPN.com for more cool shows because they're a common. August 9th is almost here. New game school. Uh, MythWits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it. Don't sell it. And don't put it on a Yahoo forum. Make sure to check out 187.com for more cool stuff and join our mailing list. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And until next week, Mike. Blow my leg off. (laughs) And then you got to hit the stop stuff, Mike. The stop stream. Okay, good. All right, good, good, good. All right, cool.